Welcome to WMNF 88.5 FM and WMNF.org. You're listening to the Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. In a stunning revelation last night, a leaked draft appears to suggest that the Supreme Court justices have made up their minds to overturn the Roe versus Wade decision that protects abortion rights in the U.S. This hour, we're going to look at what we learned from this document and how it might impact abortion rights across the country and right here in Florida. I'd like to hear what you have think about this issue. I'm going to open phone lines earlier than normal today. The number to call in is 813-239-9663. Of course, you can always email dj at wmnf.org, or you can text 813-433-0885. Please sign your name and where you're calling from, where you're texting from if you do send us a text. So joining us right now on the, oh, I'm also going to tell you that I'm giving precedence today to women callers. So if you do call 813-239-9663, I will put women on first. Joining us to talk about the breaking news is Amy Weintraub, the Reproductive Rights Program Director at Progress Florida. Welcome back to WMNF's Tuesday Cafe, Amy. Oh, it's such a joy to be back, Sean, even under these terrible circumstances. I'm glad you can join us, uh, especially thanks for the l last notice, late notice that I gave you to, to come on the show. But before we get into the details of what we learned in the last 14 hours or so, I first just want to hear what your reaction was when you heard this news. Well, I, I was uh, really, really upset and shocked, even though, you know, we sort of suspected that the, the decision may go this way it's still it's it's just unnerving when it actually comes down and we certainly didn't expect it late at night um, this early and, and of course it was because of the leak which i'm sure you're going to be getting into that we got this this in, uh, sort of inside intelligence and so yes what we're talking about is that politico last night published what they say is an initial draft majority opinion that was written by justice samuel alito it was circulated inside the court and obtained by Politico. And, you know, it's a, it's something, it's a draft. So, and, and it's an alleged draft. We don't have any confirmation that this is the, is for certain an actual Supreme court document, or if it is a Supreme court document, whether any changes have been made or will be made in the meantime. So all those caveats, of course, we should um, make sure that we point out but it certainly appears that it's the writing of a Supreme Court justice and that it's been voted on preliminarily by the Supreme Court justices in a majority are ready to overturn Roe versus Wade. So uh, what would that mean for abortion rights in the country? Well, it would decimate the legal right to abortion in many, many states. Um, it would mean that the Mississippi ban, which bans, bans abortion past 15 weeks of pregnancy, would be allowed to stand. And that means that our own abortion ban that was passed by the Florida legislature and signed by Governor DeSantis will be allowed to go into law. And that opens the door for other legislators that are populated by anti-abortion extremists to further restrict abortion in, in their states. And, and we would probably see um, an even more um, draconian ban being passed in, in the coming years here in Florida. I want to remind people that our guest is Amy Weintraub, the Reproductive Rights Program Director at Progress Florida. We're talking this morning about a Politico story that says that they have leaked a, that they have published a leaked initial draft majority opinion written by Justice Samuel Alito and circulated inside the U.S. Supreme Court that says that the they have voted and that they will be overturning Roe v. Wade. We won't hear the official decision probably for another couple of months, but this uh, this stunning revelation, even though, as, as everyone is pointing out, we kind of suspected that it would happen, but maybe the, um, I don't know, some of the details are perhaps what were most, um, are most astonishing about this. For example, um, Alito in this draft memo writes, Roe was egregiously wrong from the start. People can have opinions and justices can have an opinions, but really that has a lot of weight. Amy, why, why, why is it important if a Supreme Court justice is saying that a decision by the Supreme Court that happened 50 years ago which was egregiously wrong from the start? That's different than just people weighing in on something. That has some ramifications, doesn't it? It does. And it just it and, and to me, it drives home the idea that these are 
that these are political statements that are being made by people who happen to sit on the Supreme Court. And um, it, it, it denies more than 50 years or nearly 50 years of legal precedence that has been upheld again and again. And it, it denigrates the opinions of all of these jurists. And, um, you know, for sure, it is, um, it is sharp and it is clear and it is an agenda that is being pushed. I, but before we go on, Sean, may I just say that I want to reassure all listeners that abortion is still legal in the state of Florida and that there are providers and abortion funds and others who are working really hard right at this moment and every single day to get people to the care they need and that they will continue to do that, you know, no matter what, no matter what abortion bans are passed or no matter what the Supreme Court does, even if that means connecting with providers outside of the state of Florida and getting patients to those providers. So if someone is in need of care, they should not despair and they should call their um, local clinic, their abortion provider, their abortion fund to get the help that they need because there are many, many of us working on that day in and day out. I want to remind people that our guest is Amy Weintraub, the Reproductive Rights Program Director at Progress Florida, and you're listening to WMNF Tampa Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. It's 10, 12 in the morning, and we have Amy on, and she's going to be certainly answering my questions, but I have to say that I one of the for, reasons I wanted to have this forum today is to get let people have a chance to weigh in, let Tampa Bay area residents or people who are listening from outside the area weigh in and about their thoughts. And so, um, Amy, I hope that you that's okay with you that we can bring in some phone calls. We already have a few people waiting on the line. And I was, uh, I was surprised perhaps to see that the first two people that called in were men and the, that, but then a woman has called in. So we'll try to get to everybody as we, as we possibly can. But as I said, I'm going to give precedence to the women who call in. And so I want to put on the air right now, Margaret from Tampa. And Margaret, you say you are in favor of ter- overturning Roe versus Wade. Yes, I am. And I thank God that it, I hope it goes through so we can stop murdering these babies, unborn babies. So that's what I wanted to say. All right. Thank you, Margaret. I, I appreciate you calling in. Thanks so much for, for that opinion. And if you have an opinion that you'd like to voice, if you'd like to agree or disagree with Margaret, please give us a call, 813-239-9663. You can text us at 813-433-0885, or you can email dj at wmnf.org. Let me read a little bit more about what Justice Alito seems to have written in this draft opinion. Um, so, So, for example... Justice Samuel Alito writes, we hold that Roe and Casey, we'll talk about Casey in just a second, must be overruled. And the the, document is called the opinion of the court. And then Alito goes on to write, it is time to heed the constitution and return the issue of abortion to the people's elected representatives. Okay, that's a lot right there, Amy. What does that mean that the uh, return to the Constitution, essentially Alito is accusing the government of the United States for 49 years of not following the Constitution. And uh, that has to do with, I guess, the balance of powers between the courts and the legislatures. Yeah, I'm sure it does. And I'm not a constitutional lawyer, Sean, so I don't want to pretend, I'm not even a lawyer at all. So I don't want to pretend that I am and that I have some deep um, analysis of of, um, this opinion, but I do um, know that they want to return to pre-19, that Alito and his ilk want to return to pre-1973 where each state could, um, each state legislature had the power to determine abortion restrictions based on, you know, their, what the majority of their body believed. And so that is indeed what, what he's attempting to do. Um, looking at the Constitution and trying to pull out that type of societal change, I think is a real is a real challenge. I mean, let's remember that this same Constitution is the one that allowed people to live in to be enslaved. This is the same Constitution that that folks use to deny women, um, people of color, the right to vote for centuries, for more than a century. So, um, you know, it. it uh, it is a reach, in my opinion, what what he's trying to say as a as a non lawyer. 
Our guest is Amy Weintraub, the Reproductive Rights Program Director at Progress Florida, and we've got a full bank of phones. So I do want to get to some people who are on the line. Um, let me read this question and have you respond to it first, though, Amy, because Wendy in Seminole writes, don't know if this is off topic, but what about birth control pills? Will they still be available or are they on the chopping block too? Well, birth control is not addressed in this, in Roe v. Wade or in this opinion. Birth control is and will be continued to be available. And we will be on the lookout for any uh, attempts by um, extremists to uh, restrict our ability to get that very, very critical healthcare, um, healthcare need service, healthcare need met. Absolutely. So it will not be implicated by any decision regarding Roe in the coming in the coming months. Now, many people would argue, however, that abortion care is a form of birth control. It 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 controls birth, and so. You know, it is part, abortion is part of any modern healthcare systems repertoire of reproductive healthcare services. So if, if one cares about abortion, I mean, about birth control, then caring about abortion is critical too. You're listening to Tuesday Cafe on WMNF Tampa. I'm Sean Canan, and my guest is Amy Weintraub, the Reproductive Rights Program Director at Progress Florida. We're talking about that political report which seems to have leaked a draft of an opinion of the U.S. Supreme Court in which Justice Samuel Alito says that uh, the majority of his fellow justices have voted with him to hold that Roe and Casey must be overruled. Let's hear from one of our listeners, Jeanette in Gulfport. Hi, Jeanette. What would you have to say about what we learned about from this political report? I think it's shocking that our country is going so far to the right that they are forgetting about everybody else that needs to get an abortion for their their safety, for their health, for their for their being able to afford their lives. It's not about killing babies. It's about our women's rights and freedom. I'm disgusted by it. I think that the political bent or slant on everything is is gotten out of control. I and mean, I don't believe that it's the majority opinion that everybody should get, you know, should should overturn Roe. I don't think it's the majority. I think they're making it seem like it's the majority. Jeanette, thank you for that point. And uh, so, what do we know about that, uh, uh, Amy? What's what? How do people feel in the United States feel about Roe versus Wade? Poll after poll shows that the majority of Americans support Roe v. Wade. They support access to abortion care. They know that abortion is essential health care. The fact is we need it here. We need abortion access here in Tampa, just like it's needed everywhere in the United States. One in four American women access abor abortion at some point during their reproductive years. And it is important for social reasons. It's important for economic reasons, for racial equality, um, access, being able to control when one has birth, uh, how, many, how many children they have, the spacing between those children, all of those things have led to women being able to be where they are. The gains that we've made economically, the gains that we've made politically, socially are thanks to that. So it's critical. And Americans know that. Floridians know that. Thank you for your call, Jeanette. You're welcome. Thanks for calling in. If you'd like to join the conversation, it's 813-239-9663. You might have better luck texting right now, 813-433-0885. Please sign your name or emailing us at dj at wmnf.org. Since we're on that same topic, I'm going to read a short email from Jeff. And he writes, according to Pew Research, about 60% of Americans support abortion. Based on that, I would be surprised if abortion were overturned. It has been known for a long time that this could happen. And I believe Biden at one point expressed the idea of adding more justices to the Supreme Court because of the conservative dominance. That discussion has fa faded. A lot of times the media will get caught up on social issues to get people scared and to stir up debate. At the end of the day, though, I think I have the I think the right to an abortion will be preserved. That's from Jeff out there in cyberspace. So, Amy, let's tackle that. A uh, couple of things in there. First of all, as you know, uh, additional information about the the 
opinions of Americans about that they support abortion rights. But Jeff seems confident that because it's po politically popular, that it will definitely be protected. Your thoughts about that? It's it after that the the votes that we saw come out of the Florida legislature passing the. 15 week abortion ban, it's difficult for me to imagine that the votes would shift dramatically in future sessions. So I'm, um, if, if Roe falls, then I'm not sure that, that he's right about the Florida legislature protecting the right to abortion access. That's not clear to me. And on that topic of the, how, how Floridians feel about pr protecting the right to abortion, a new Florida law, which is called HB5, makes most abortions illegal after 15 weeks of gestation. And in, back in February, before the law passed, the Public Opinion Research Lab at the University of North Florida released its statewide poll of registered voters. This was in February, and they found that the majority of respondents, 57%, opposed HB5 either strongly or somewhat with 34% either su supporting it either somewhat or strongly. So uh, 57 to 34% of people in Florida support abortion access after 15 weeks, yet the, as you pointed out, the legislature still uh, passed that ban. Yeah, I mean, the legislature's populated with um, ideological extremists who are very willing to, lead, to use reproductive health. As, it's just one example, but reproductive health is a pawn in their in their reindeer games, um, they do it. They do it all the time, and it is of deep concern that they do not care what the majority of their constituents think, and that they continue to um, this this drumbeat of of social discord. And it is, it, I mean, as someone who's an advocate for reproductive health, you can imagine my level of frustration. I want to remind people that we're talking about the new political story that say they where they say they published an initial draft majority opinion written by Justice Samuel Alito that was circulated inside the U.S. Supreme Court and obtained by Politico that says that the opinion of the court is that Roe and Casey must be overruled. And in, in Justice Samuel Alito goes on to say it's time to heed the Constitution and return the issue of abortion to the people's elective representatives that rings out, uh, the, the phrase that, that rings out to me there is kind of, it sounds like states' rights. Oh, sure. And we've, and we've heard that yeah. phrase before in American history. Yes, we have. Are you alluding to the Civil War? Uh, maybe. And, <laughs> and, and, and slavery, yeah. So it's like, yeah. I, I, you know, uh, I, I guess that's maybe not an, a fair comparison because states could choose to do things that aren't as bad as slavery, of course. But, um, you know, I think that bringing up states' rights is kind of, you know, definitely points toward an old-fashioned interpretation of the Constitution. And so um, I guess that's just an indication of how these, these justices are leaning. Absolutely. And I mean, there are many people um, who would argue that the bans, the abortion bans and this, this um, impending decision from, from the Supreme Court are part of an intertwined system of oppression that deny all sorts of, of civil liberties and that deny uh, Black and Indigenous and other people of color access to their rights and that it's rooted in misogyny and it's rooted in anti anti blackness and and white supremacy and that sort of thing and it's it's difficult not to see it that way i mean you use the word word old fashioned and um, it does it does feel like that out of okay. touch um, regressive all of that our guest is Amy Weintraub, the Reproductive Rights Program Director at Progress Florida. I just did something I, I typically don't do. I just dropped all five of the people who are on the line, and here's why. I want to hear from women about this issue. I have to tell you, I, I want to hear from women. There were five men hanging on the line, from what I could tell. I apologize if I hung up on a woman by accident, but I think there were five men clogging up our phone lines, if, I, if you don't mind me saying that. I really want to hear from women on this issue. What do you think about what we learned from Justice Samuel Alito and the majority of Supreme Court justices, if we can believe, of course, this draft that came out from Politico? 
give us a call, 813-239-9663. Look, if there's time at the end of the show, I certainly will hear from some men, but I honestly, I, I want to hear what women think about this. 813-239-9663, dj at wmnf.org, text 813-433-0885. So um, Morgan writes, I really do not like the fact that Roe versus Wade was overturned. Okay, and I, I'm going to pause Morgan for just a second. The It looks like it, sh it will be. It hasn't been yet. There's no official decision from the U.S. Supreme Court, um, but, you know, we certainly have an insight into the way that they're, they're, um, they view things. So just pointing that out. But thank you for the comment, Morgan. And she says, I truly believe that this country is moving in recession because this takes away um, the right for women to be women. They have their own prerogative to be a human being, to be a female. It's wrong. Women should have their own right. Men do not have the right to tell a woman when and when to not create a baby. What happens when a woman is raped and becomes pregnant? You know, um, what does? how does a woman even prove she was raped when a man has has to decide whether or not the law is in her favor. Morgan goes on a little bit, but I think we get get some of the idea there. Amy, how would you answer some of these things uh, that Morgan is pointing out about, um, you know, the direction that the country is moving with this decision, if it if it in indeed becomes uh, the law, I guess you would say, even though it's from a court, and about how women and women's rights to control their own body. Yeah, I agree that it's a grave violation of human rights and human dignity and that um, those who are living on the margins will be the ones who are most severely impacted by this. Um, I'll tell you that I have heard, Sean, that clinics in states that are surrounding those that are those states that have restricted abortion are already very overburdened with all of the new patients from other states that are flooding there. And they're going to only become more overwhelmed as more restrictions pass and as, as people have to travel to get the care that they need. Um, again, you know, we're talking about regressive, regressive, a regressive society, regressive public health policies. It is an outrage. I want to remind people that our guest is Amy Weintraub, the Reproductive Rights Program Director at Progress Florida. You're listening to WMNF's Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canaan. It's 1028 in the morning, and I should say in about 20 minutes or so, I'm going to bring on a state representative from Tampa, Diane Hart, to talk about the Florida State Legislature and what they're doing when it comes to abortion rights. Uh, and and uh, we'll hear from her in just a bit. So I can't wait to talk to her. But right now we're talk we're speaking with Amy and we're also speaking with each other because we're having a conversation, a community conversation here on the radio today. Uh, in fact, let's turn back to the phone lines and I wanna put on Teresa from Sarasota. Um, oh, can't put her on just quite yet. Uh, but I will, I will go back to Teresa in just a bit. Um, but let me read this statement. Look, if you're a man and you absolutely need to, um, to, to join the conversation at this moment, send me a very short text. Ted in Elfers wrote, I wish we could get religion out of government. So I'll, I'll read, I read that from Ted. Thank you for that. Um, also, let me read these texts that are coming in. Here's from Martin who says, um, he's agreeing with the idea to talk to women. He says, mostly men are making the laws and changing them and mostly women are affected. Their opinion is what you should seek. So that's the opinion of Martin who wrote a very short email that I was able to, to get on the air. Uh, and we have another text here that says, this is not signed. I really wish you'd sign if you send a text that way we, um, well, you're owning your opinion kind of. And this person says, abortion is the right of the individual, and that's something that is inherently American, that someone has the individual right that might make someone else uncomfortable or upset. That's what it makes America free. And that person goes on. Um, so, all right, now we have Teresa in Sarasota. Hi, Teresa. What's on your mind? Hi. Um, in 1973, when Roe versus Wade ruled, when the government ruled for Roe versus Wade, it came about as a lot of death and destruction of women. For whatever reason the abortion was thought about or needed to happen, it was in the body of a woman. The men that are sitting on the ruling of the thought for reversing Roe versus Wade have never experienced the audacity and the 
degradation that a woman has to go through. The country's in an uproar and it's a lot of chaos, but the woman should still have the choice of her body. Seek out a board of women, even if it's women politicians or women congresswomen, senators, seek out a board of women and have them reevaluate. I don't think a man, a man would never understand what a woman went through or will go through that would make her want to abort an unwanted child in the first place. Teresa. A man cannot identify with that. All right. Thank you for your call. I, tr I appreciate you weighing in. Thank you so much, Teresa. And uh, if you'd like to call in 813-239-9663. Right now I'm taking the opinions of women and uh, I might get to some men later on. If you'd like to, if you're a man and you absolutely have to weigh in, send me a very short text or email 813-433-0885 or dj at wmnf.org. Thanks for that thought, um, Teresa. So I, I appreciate that. Here's a text that came in that says, um, I'm a woman who had a couple abortions in my past I was grateful that I was able to give up the baby because I was in my 40s. I already had three children that were grown. I find it abhorrent that the Supreme Court would overturn Roe v. Wade after 50 years. I also worked at Department of Family Ch Children's Services for six years and saw the number of children that needed to be adopted. It's selfish and political for this to be an issue in 2022. And this person goes on. But thank you for sharing your personal story. And I, I appreciate that. So, Amy, um, we've talked a little bit about. Uh, the some, someone wrote in and talked about the idea of adding more justices to this U.S. Supreme Court. Where does that idea stand right now? I, you know, I did hear a lot about it back during the election and right after Biden's inauguration, but I haven't heard anything more about that in several, maybe in in a year. So I'm not. It's not clear to me at all that that's something that that the president is seeking to do. And another thing that's thought that. Uh, that the so keep in mind that Democrats have the presidency, the U.S. Senate right now, and the U.S. House of Representatives, and so there's been some pressure on the Democrats to pass filibuster reform or eliminate the filibuster altogether. Why is that something that that's being discussed? Because they it would it would be ideal if if abortion access, abortion rights were codified in federal law, not through case through cases like Roe v. Wade, but actually if Congress passed a law that guaranteed that. In order to do that currently, they need more than a majority vote. But if the filibuster ended, they would go back to only needing 50, over 50%. Um, however, I'll say that there are anti-abortion Democrats um, who will never vote to um, codify reproductive rights, although there are Republicans who are for reproductive rights. So perhaps they're, I mean, I'm, I'm sure people have done the calculation and there probably is a over 50% chance, but the filibuster would have to end for um, that barrier that's put up by Republicans to go away. Our guest is Amy Weintraub, the Reproductive Rights Program Director at Progress Florida. And right now we're having a conversation about what it means that last night a leaked draft appears to suggest that the Supreme Court justices have already made up their minds to overturn the Roe versus Wade decision that protects abortion rights in the U.S. And our callers are weighing in. And so I do have a full bank of phones on, on uh, hold right now. So let's get some people on the air. I'd like to talk to Jane in Tampa. Hi, Jane. What would you like to say? Well, Sean, I'd like to say that I agree. I'm for it and against it. I'm for it because a lot of times that this responsibility falls on the female. Uh, she has to contemplate after she realizes, hey, I'm pregnant. Well, am I going to keep it? Am I going to have an abortion? Does the father want an active part in its life? There are a lot of questions that go along with this. I think that the big guys in Washington are not looking at the whole picture. If you take away the right of abortion, you've got to supply medical, uh, food, um, and there's so much that goes on that 
you'll have to give that brown or black or even a white uh, female these options and these um, helpers along with her and this child. I do feel that the male should take full responsibility for this, even if he wants to be a parent or not, because the responsibility was on both of their heads when the uh, inoculation happened. But I do feel that the government is not looking at this is going to hurt um, the poor person, the uh, less advantaged. You have a white couple who has 1.2 kids. Another child is not going to take them to the poor house. It's going to make things rough. But when you look at the less advantaged uh, female and male, that's going to take a um, that's going to be a big problem. And it's going to be a big problem until that child is able to care for itself or maybe the parents who win the lottery. Jane, that's all I have to say. All right, Jane, thank you so much for calling in. I appreciate that. Uh, before we go to our guests, we're going to um, let me go to one more phone call since we have so many people on the line. I want to open up a couple of uh, lines in, just in case other people want to weigh in. So, Kay, in Bradenton, what would you like to say? Good morning. Um, what I want to say is like, all right, if the woman is pregnant and she has a medical issue and it's the woman or the baby, are they going to choose the baby? I mean, that's, I don't, I, you know, and also one more thing. Um, when Clinton was president, I can remember that women who were pregnant were dumping their babies like in dumpsters and whatever and um finally they had places where people where women could go to take their babies you know safe places um you know i don't think i don't think these people who are making these laws understand the reality and the severity of this you know and also one more thing men should be considered responsible for conceiving a child. How we do that, I have no idea. And that's all I have to say. All right. Thank you, Kay. Thanks for those thoughts. So, um, Amy, would, what, how would you weigh in on what we've heard so far of the, some of the callers who've called in the last few minutes? I, I mean, I, I agree that, that um, men should be held accountable, males should be held accountable for if, if a pregnancy results in a child, of course. And, and you know, there are some structures in place to that, that force men to, if paternity is established, that force men to support children. That I mean, that is, that is the case. And that's a, that's a great thing. And those, those systems should be strengthened, no doubt. But if someone is pregnant, and they choose, they decide that they want to terminate the pregnancy. Once they've made that decision, that, that access should be fully granted to them and they should be able to access it with dignity and with support. And I just wanted to mention that I know a lot of folks are, are upset about what, what they've heard come, gonna be coming down from the Supreme Court and that there are things that can happen that they can do right now to ease the burden on, on the people who are seeking abortion care. And that includes getting involved here in Tampa with the Tampa Bay Abortion Fund. They are, they have more calls coming in for help than ever before. And they have, I heard uh, one of their spokespersons say last night that 900 women from Tampa alone will need assistance with getting out of state to access a, a, um, abortion care. And so that means they need help monetarily with gas cards, with air, buying airplane tickets, hotels, et cetera. They need volunteers to help drive people to appointments, to set up travel itineraries, to care for children while mom has to go out of state to, to get the care that she needs. So that's really, really a, a way to get involved and, and make, you know, have a meaningful part in someone accessing what is currently their right to do. Um, the other thing is to learn about self-managed abortion. And what I'm talking about is accessing abortion pills outside the traditional medical system and using them on their own. And this can be done safely. 
but, but the right information needed. And we offer trainings on this about once a month. And folks can visit floridareprofreedom.org to get more information on those trainings. But um, in fact, we're offering one tonight. And, um, and so anyway, those are things that folks can do right now. Um, also, there's some um, public events happening, one at five o'clock at the courthouse in St. Petersburg, for example. Again, that's at five o'clock today. People coming out in protest of the, uh, of, of the opinion that was the, the draft of the opinion that was leaked yesterday. Our guest is Amy Weintraub, the Reproductive Rights Program Director at Progress Florida. She'll be on for about another three or four minutes, but let me uh, uh, go to the phone lines. JB has been holding for a while. JB, thanks for holding. What would you like to say? Well, I think what people, and especially women, don't realize is that this picture is bigger than it seems. It's not just only about abortion rights we're talking about. Uh, as we noticed in the past a few years, there's We've had many changes going on, and it seems like we're going backwards in time instead of forward. Once they've passed one law, I remember my husband even saying, well, what's wrong with this or what's wrong with that law? And I said, because once you let them pass something that's been in effect 50 or 100 years, then they get away with passing another law, then another, and then another. And I always give this excuse that they're going by the Constitution. I think people need to read the Constitution and, and also look at history. We've had abortion since the beginning of time. We've had gay people since the beginning of time. And we've had everything since the beginning of time. But it seems like our politicians are trying to change as fast as they can. And we do know this is coming from the far right and are trying to change things. And my, my, my thing about this is that, what is the motive really behind this? As they say it's Christianity, but most of these people who say that they're Christians, they've never set foot in a church. And although you don't have to go to church to, to be a, a Christian, the thing of it is, is that these men, a certain group of men are making decisions and then telling the world, that this is what we all want, when in fact, it's not true. When, no man should tell a woman what she can do with her body. <laughs> well, JB, thanks for those, those thoughts. I appreciate that you calling in. And uh, we have some people on the line. I uh, hope you hold for a little bit because I'm going to um, thank my current guest and bring on my next guest. And then hopefully we'll have some time in the, in the few minutes to come back to the callers. Uh, so Susan, Sherry, and Susan, please continue to hold. I want to thank you so much for coming on WMNF's Tuesday Cafe, Amy. It's a pleasure, Sean. Thank you for having me. Amy Weintraub is the Reproductive Rights Program Director at Progress Florida. We're going to be right back after a quick music break. We're going to talk to our next guest, who is Florida Representative Diane Hart. Please stay with us on WMNF's Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. You can call in at 813-239-9663, email dj at wmnf.org or text 813-433-0885. Stay with us. <laughs> 